crazy. Hey, but that's how it goes. I need to go to a happier place. I feel romantic. Get hot, Pussy. Just go to bed, darling. <laughs> All right, change the subject. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing? Fabulous. Fine, I just had a big breakfast and I'm, I feel like I want to go back to bed. There you go. There you go. Kel? Seize the day. I am doing fabulous. Good. OT, how are you doing? OT. Feeling a bit rough. She's <laughs> my baby. She's a good girl. Today's topic is about something we all know very well Ozfest. Love it. Are we ever going to do another Ozfest? Great question. That's that's more of a question for you, good sir. No, it's, you're all Osbournes. It's not me. Well, I think oh, it we is. Are we? I, I don't think, think anyone's going to show up if it's me, yeah. Mum, and Jack head piss farting around no, on but stage. No, they, but they, I mean, they, they didn't all come to see me. There was, there was no, lots of other bands on there. I mean, yeah. You could get a headliner. It doesn't have to be me. Be much better if it was, though. I'd yeah, I, yeah, but yeah. For how many sake? How uh, how many years did Ozfest run? The last one we did was in yeah, eight, which twenty eighteen on New Year's Eve. That so, counted as an Ozfest? Yeah, it was an Ozfest. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was yeah that was dad that was dad's last gig last gig yeah. on uh, New Year's Eve at the Forum. So it went from. 2000, oh, sorry, 1996 to 2018 yes. with a few breaks in between. Yeah. Is this hard for you to talk about? No, not at all, not at all. What inspired you? Like, for people that don't know, Mom, explain what OzFest was. OzFest was a touring festival for hard edge music. And um, the best part of it was we had a second stage for new and upcoming bands. Wasn't there a time there were three stages? Yes. Yeah, there was. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. What was that one all about? Just all about new bands. You know, we had so, so not, many bands. Bands that, was it like bands that formed that morning? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was like, a, are you a fledgling or are you a side? No, what it was, it was so there was never a break in music. So... One band, one band on the side stage would end, and then immediately stage three would start. Yeah, so yeah. there was never a lull without music while there was set changes but going you, on. You, you know, you, you know, I, I, I don't know whether I'm right in saying this, but I thought, I think greed got involved in it with, 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 with promote with uh, booking certain bands. That you, it you, was, yeah, it it was a oh, very, I'm, I'm right, I'm right in saying yeah, it. it was a very weird. Beast because all the bands were our mates, but the managers were greedy, and for some reason they thought that we were making Me billions. billions on it, and we weren't. We made a profit, but it was not like we couldn't retire on it. And um, managers and agents wanted more and more and more, I mean, and it just it, wasn't it, cost effective is, anymore. So is that ultimately why I was we first... stopped? Yeah, because it just wasn't cost effective. Your mother used to be on the, she's on the phone a lot now. But when that was going down, it was fucking insane. I mean, year, years and years ago, one of the bands, it was the second Ozfest we did, or the third, um, wouldn't go on stage until I agreed to give them 10,000 more dollars. And they were holding everything up. And I said, of course, of course, I'll give it you. What band? <sighs> Say it. Say it. Dan's Dan's egg. And oh, then why, oh, you, why are you going to protect that twat? And then I didn't give them the money. They went on played and I went, fuck you. Yeah, they signed a contract. You didn't signed they? a contract. Your agent agreed it, and you're just gouging. Didn't they get in trouble with pedophilia or something? No. No, it was just he. They liked young girls. Young girls backstage, and they would taking pictures of their dicks in the young girl's mouths and oh. putting them on laminates and parading them around backstage. That's and not... No, it's disgusting. Weren't they on Hollywood records? I don't remember I what think record. they were. They were. They yes. were and on Hollywood. Hollywood. Rec Hollywood. And I went to Disney and complained because I said, this is a disgrace. I remember it. 
Now it's all coming back it's to me. It's all coming back to me. I have such a vivid memory of those laminates and the pictures and because it, it was, I was really, really young. Young, yeah. I was so young and I, and I remember, and and I remember the manager. Didn't you? That was, was it the tour manager, or the manager you kicked out of the of the of Ozfest because they had the picture on his laminate. Yeah, it's so all coming back now. Yeah, they were all nasty, nasty. That was ninety six. And that was ninety. No, 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 no. It was ninety seven, and 97. it wasn't what we nasty were... or nasty. Nasty. nasty, nasty people. Like, Ozfest started in nineteen ninety six, so I was about to turn eleven. So I was 10 and you were about to turn 12. 12. I mean, the first Ozfest, we were all very reserved by it. We were. We, we were We were kind of best behavior because it was so big. And it was, Minnie and Maggie. <laughs> uh, the dogs were there. Minnie and Maggie, yeah. But it was, it the was front so, of the border. But it was so big, we, we were intimidated by but, it because yeah. we would only ever be, be in the main stage, backstage. We'd go to catering, kind of see people. They wouldn't really talk to us that much. Yeah. And, I, 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 I don't know, like a horse. I can get on it and get out of it. Oh, God. Fucking Phil from Pantera. Oh, yeah. oh God. He used to give oh, me, like, God. don't do drugs and don't drink advice. Yeah. He'd be but like, then simultaneously giving us Crown Royale and Wild Turkey, so yeah. it never really made sense. No. Well, at least Crown Royale comes in a nice, nice bag. Velvet I know. Pouch. Yeah, it comes out, pouch. It comes out the other end. I, I, I remember. I have a fucking memory. One time, I was in Pantera's dressing room. It was with uh, uh, Vinny and Dime. Dime had handed me a shot. I'm about to drink it, and she fucking walks into the yes. dressing room, and she I'm like, again, the cat's mother. My, my mother walks into the dressing room, and I'm like, Ugh. and then they handed her one, and we were just like. All right, we just did a shot, and I was like, maybe fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> I was it tasted like. I was like, sick. I'm gonna get in so much trouble, and she was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it," and we just drank it. It tasted like sick. It's horrible. horrible. Oh, it's so strong. Never tried it. Oh, it's what? Revolting. You never tried you wild turkey. Fucking ne liar! Ne never tried Crown Royal. You've ever. never drank Crown no, Royal. Never, ever. Oh my god. Daddy you know, was a Hennessy man. I, you, you know who got me on uh, a, a drink for a while? Was Uncle Zach introduced me to Crown Royal and Ginger Ale. I liked that. It and old Crown Royal and Sprite. That's yeah. what... Um, mm. I remember when Zach, when Zach, when yeah, Zach first me. joined me, he went to England. And when we used to live at Bill House, the guy next door used to make his own fucking... George, but George's wine. It was like fucking moonshine. And Zach goes... <laughs> There's a big mound of dust, sand in the yard and he, he couldn't find his way back from my studio to the house and he was climbing up and he threw up at the top and rolled back down and he puked. <laughs> oh, Zach. Zachy boy. We he's clean so right now. Good, good. Um, he's, got, he's got a quite a bit of sprite, hasn't he? He's got years, yeah. He's doing brilliant. How many times did you hide in other bands' dressing rooms from mum and dad? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was like it a was daily da thing. Daily. Hiding in dressing rooms, buses. I got my first tattoo in the back of Hatebreed's tour bus yep. when I was 16 oh, I and wasted. What was, what was that? It was, I had it done in What's white. It? I had it done in white ink, and it said mum. And uh, I bought the guy. I bought an, an ounce of weed and got a tattoo in the same sitting. It's oh, great. that's brilliant, yeah. Jack! Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. Was it good Fuck. weed? It was great weed. Yeah, it was in Colorado. Oh my god! I don't even tell me about it. I'm mm. like, and and you know what? And I and because we were flying on the plane back to L.A., I was like. Fuck, how am I gonna get this home? So I had him like vacuum seal it like six times and I had it in my backpack and the whole flight home, I'm like, I'm going to prison. I'm fucking flying with an ounce of weed. I'm go I'm fucked. I'm like, I was so paranoid that somehow, somewhere, there'd be a fucking sniffer dog and I was gonna go to prison for, for transporting <laughs> Good, an ounce I'm of weed. I'm glad you did have an but uncomfortable you, you know, you're flight. But you're talking about every time, even, even now. I'll go through it, but I think, oh, I cannot find cocaine in my bag. Uh, well, I, Where, unless it was like thirty-five-year-old cocaine. I know, but that, that's my paranoia. I always think. I, I well, you know what I do. This is this is like not. It's obviously not the same thing, but obviously I shoot a lot, so I have a I have gunpowder. And stuff well, like yeah, that. like I'm always I. So I have like bags that no firearms, no bullets, nothing ever go anywhere near as my travel bags. Because I just don't want like a bullet or something to be in my backpack when I travel. Oh, it did. one time, Daddy was eating popcorn on the plane, and he used to wear a fanny pack 
I remember and the Dad's popcorn seeds went into his fanny pack. And so they're searching Daddy as he's come back into the country. And they see these seeds, popcorn things. And, and they think they're like drug and seeds. And they're going, what is this? I said, it's popcorn. They're going, no, it's not. I said, that is popcorn. Put it in Eat a fucking it. pan. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. It's uh-huh. fucking... Do you remember coming in from Hawaii? Just now. <laughs> Just now? We haven't been to Hawaii for a year. No, he's talking about that trip. Oh, oh no. No, years ago when you came into Hawaii. Oh, fuck, yeah. yeah. What did you have? Oh, they stripped from... him and I come whipped from... him. And... I come from Japan back to America and I land... come into America from Hawaii. I've got a leather fucking coat on. Leather pants, Zach and fucking Randy Castillo were fucked up on the plane. So, like, they, and I'm standing at seven o'clock in the morning, it's fucking thousand degrees, and I'm dying. Last night's got, stage uh, makeup on. Oh, I've got the makeup on. And the guy said, what are, you, what, what are you coming here for? I said, I'm, I'm coming back from Japan. Said, are, you, are you doing work here? I said, No, I'm going to a wedding. Joni's wedding. Joni's wedding, yeah. So he goes, well, you haven't got the right p- paper. I said, well, I'm I'm working in in the mainland. Which the guy goes, what do you mean the mainland? Well, it was it's a kind of talk. He's not supposed to say the mainland or I don't fucking know. So uh, they put me in a different uh, holding cell, which is a fucking cage with these other people. It's uh, all open like a, a corral. And I'm going. I said to the guy. Every time I'm he goes, shut, the, shut up, I, I'll speak to you. You can only speak when I speak to you. I said, well, I, I gotta, can I find my wife? She's leaving from England to come to this wedding. If you're not going to allow me in. And I, kept, and I, had, to, I had to phone the mayor or something. I had to pay $25 for a, a, a special stamp on my wife. That was fucking horrendous. Well, you're a criminal. The Osborne's podcast is sponsored by Infinity Massage Chair. The Infinity Chair is a must-have in the Osborne household. Right, Dad? Fantastic. (laughs) Because it does so much more than just massage your body. It helps reduce so much build-up tension and stress. What's your favorite part about the chair? Shut up, I'm out of massage. Sorry, sorry. My favorite part about the Infinity Chair is just how deep it gets. Oh, yeah. Why settle for anything less when you can have the best? Infinity is a number one in luxury massage chairs. Say goodbye to stress and hello to ultimate relaxation. Right, Dad? That's fantastic. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's unbelievable, this chair. It's It's, it's oddly good, right? You know, I have regular massage, but this is as good as any mouth. I actually think so. Like, I actually get more relaxed in this than I do with a regular yeah, it's, massage. It's, it's, it's on my back right now. It's, it's getting a really deep muscle. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm... Because yeah, usually these chairs are kind of like... Wimpy. Wimpy. This, this is great. This is like a real muscle. Right? Gets deep. Gets down to the bone. The deepness is wonderful. Get $4,000 off the Infinity Gen Max 4D massage chair. Visit infinitymassagechairs.com forward slash Osborne's. That's infinitymassagechairs.com forward slash Osborne's. You know, I, I really recommend this chair. I'm not just going to. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, so anxious. Oh. All right, we'll leave you. We won't interrupt anymore. It's unbelievable, this chair. Which, 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 you went to nearly every one, you guys, didn't you? Yeah, mm-hmm. every single one. Which one would you say was the best one of the... Oh. 90, the 98. 98 was the best year ever. Hands down, the best Ozfest. And every one thereafter was compared to 98. Yeah. It was so funny. Like, at the end of every Ozfest, people would be like, was hmm. it as good? Wasn't it as good? Because it was like, well, it, Ozfest it was our summer camp. 98, it was you... Tool, Limp Biscuit, uh-huh. um, Incubus, Incubus, Incubus. S- uh, Snot, uh, System of a Down. I always remember that Snot guy. Yeah, Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. Loved him. Yeah, I 98 was. Lynn. He was great. He knocked my door. Every fucking night he knocked my door. He said, Can I hide out in your dressing room? <laughs> like, what have you done today, well, he, Lynn? Yeah, well, what he, the fuck have you done now? He went on because Limp Biscuit. 
they had a giant toilet bowl as their set piece. Mm -hmm. And he climbed up the toilet bowl and during Limp Bizkit's set had a porn star give him a blowjob while Limp Bizkit were playing. It, everyone went nuts because you can't fucking do that. He went running naked through backstage and burst into dad's dressing room naked, being I like, totally hey, forgot hey, about Oz, that. hey, Oz, could I, ha could I hide in here and hid in dad's toilet? Because security, the, the police or whoever know, couldn't I, get him. He was always, every day there was something else with him. He was, yeah. he with, was uh, a character. Yeah, the, the last gig, he goes, hey, Oz, go save this bud for you. Give me a fucking old marijuana bud. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he, uh, but Whit Whitfield was on that to Life yeah, of Agony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whitfield, we Soulfly. miss you. You know, you, know, you know, Whitfield, oh, can we do a gig, one-off gig somewhere, Mongolia or somewhere, and he'll be, he'll be there, and I'll yeah. go, what the fuck are you doing here? Whitfield is, is a true Man nomad. Of, he is, he's, he's, he's kind of yeah, like your You know what I admire, I admire about him? He's got. He seems to have his life. To, you know. All yeah, right. he's got it. It's he. He. He has his own rhythm. He Whitfield, his, we miss you, man. Yeah, love Whitfield. Um, but yeah, so I think for me, you know, Oz was Corn on that tour. No, Corn no. didn't. Corn did two thousand and three. Two thousand three. Yeah. Um, love them too. Yeah. I'm trying a, to think of like who else was on that tour in the second stage because that's where we hung out the most. Yeah. Well, Soulfly headlined second stage. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but like Inc Incubus and System of a Down were like baby bands then. Yeah. They were like, they had just been signed. Yeah. And they were like, like our big brothers Incubus were. Yeah. yeah. Great guys. We had so great, much fun with guys. them. Well, no, I mean, speaking of that, no one realizes, but Incubus played on your very first song. Yeah. It, um, it was Papa Mikey Don't and Jose yeah. played all the instruments on Papa Don't Preach and helped me do my very first single. Yeah. It's a little, little... And what single got you a number one? Well, and what <coughs> single got you a number one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's it in refrain? What single got us number one? Changes. There you go. That was great. It was such fun in those days. Why? So it was so yeah, different. it was great. Why did you decide? Because I know there's a lot. There's a lot of misnomers about Ozfest. About oh, why did it start? You know, there's a lot of, you know, you say it was because of. Well, some people say it was because dad got denied from That's Lala right, Lala Palooza. Lollapalooza, it's true. But didn't you, didn't when dad played Lollapalooza, though, I remember si seeing a conversation between you and Perry, and he was like, no, no one ever asked Ozzy to do Lollapalooza. No, nobody ever asked us to do it. I got my Ozzy's agent to say, Ozzy's free this summer, we'd like to do Lollapalooza. And they came back and they said, no, Ozzy's not cool enough. And no, Ozzy's a dinosaur. He's no, over. it was like, you're not cool, so you can't come on. And it was like, oh, oh really? Okay. Mm. And they were very diverse in the acts that they chose. I just said, well, we're going to stick to what we know. We're going to go with Hard Edge. That's it. And we're going to do our own festival. Do you guys feel, because truth be told, and I don't know if this is just me kind of looking at it through my own Osborne lens, but when Ozfest stopped as a touring festival, mm -hmm. I believe you could actually track the decline in in the popularity in hard rock. This other festivals took over but with not, us moving other hard edge festivals. But nobody in. was bringing new bands into the mix, and no one was was breaking new bands. No, they weren't. Who like you can't? No, no offense, you, but you, other touring festivals. You know, you know. Let me put in one sec. You know, you know what band? I, I met uh, the guy from In Living Color, and he said, "Why did why you never want you never approached us to to do it, us first? And I thought that's right, man. You know, you know, In Living Color. Yeah, sure. That, that, why didn't they ever get on us? I honestly Look, have you don't heard know. the guitar player? The guitar yeah. player is fucking awesome. Yeah, that's a. I... Listen, we had Jada Pinkett Smith on. Yeah. She she yeah. asked to come on. We went to see her band. They were really she, he good. You were saying we've asked uh, uh, time and time again. And I said, no. no, no, that's not true. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what. No, they would have never been turned down time and time again. They were too good a band no. to be turned down. I, I honestly don't know. It's one of those, I suppose, that uh, fell through the cracks. I just mm. can't think. But, um, the, um, yeah. but, but to that, you know, the point I'm making though is that no other touring heavy metal festival 
broke bands like Ozfest did. No, like, no, it didn't. You, you know, Tattoo the World or Not Fest. I know they're family, but like, where where was the Slipknot to come from Slipknot's festival? Did you they know? have one? Yeah, they, they have had, one. Yeah, they, they have had, one. Yeah. Slipfest. Uh, Not Fest. <laughs> no. it, it was Tattoo the World and then it turned into Not Fest. Yeah. Um, but like, did, think did, about did, it. Did it do good? Yeah, it still I does. mean, there's a, a heavy metal band that Sid works with called Swollen Teeth and they're doing really, really well. And the... I think that's a great title for a band. <laughs> what? Swollen Teeth. And they're uh, doing their second record did right you now. So. Yeah, but I... I mean, there's some, but it, it's not uh, to what you're saying. No, yeah, like no there's no Limp Bizkit, there's no Disturbed, there's no Slipknot, Slipknot there's no... System, there's no Incubus. All those bands, we didn't, obviously we can't take credit for the fact that they're phenomenal musicians and amazing songwriters and amazing performers, but they all had huge success after Ozfest. But that was the whole thing of it. And it was like we were a family going out on the road listening to bands that you guys liked. You always used to come in with your list. And it was like it was a I mean, touring really, family really, really, Jack, if it was event. Le if it was Mum and I, we wouldn't have had a fucking clue. What the no, I think you guys would have. You guys have always had an yeah. ability to pick amazing bands. Think, I mean, the amount of bands that opened for you that went on to have huge success is insane. Yeah. Think about it. Metallica, not saying Motley, Motley Crue. Um, I mean, the are bands we just listed. Yeah. I mean, it's so many bands open for you and go on to have huge success. Yeah. But that's what's so good about it, being able to give great new talent a, a a stage forum to, do it. to go and do it and play in front of huge but I, I crowds. But I tell, I tell you something, since I've been lied up, you know, Jonathan from Corn has been so fucking supportive. And I didn't really know that him that well. Okay, I texted him when his wife died. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, like, if you need a chat, just, just go on the phone to me. And he's never forgotten that. And he's, He's, he's been so consistent in the last five years. Come on, brother, you can do it. And it's, it means so much to you. That's great. When you fucking light up, you know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, no. And, that... and, 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 and uh, <coughs> Slash. Slash has been the same. David from Disturbed. Yeah. yeah. It goes on and on and on, Ozzy, the people that have Was supported Disturbed you. Was Disturbed on in yeah. 98? Yeah. Not 98. Not 98. No, no, 99. no but they, yeah. yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was 99. Great guys. Yeah. David well, has always been a huge supporter. Yeah. But so many of these guys have, you know, Corey. Yeah. From Slipknot has always been a huge supporter and clown. So it's, um, we're blessed to have come out of it with a lot of friends. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what's really, um, system. Odd. Yeah. Well, I mean, the guys uh, in system are, are the best. Oz first cultivated, uh, a real community, I think. I think so too. Oh, so backstage was really. Oh it was God. the most fun backstage. There is nothing that has ever come before like it, and there's nothing that will ever be like it. It yeah. was the most, especially when Pantera on tour. Oh, that was amazing. It was so fun. <laughs> I remember. You guys had the best time, best growing up in the summer. Did you, did, you, did you guys worry? About us running around? Oh, absolutely. I remember when you had a, a scooter, you're going, Dad, someone stole my new Get him another one. <laughs> my scooter got stolen. And it was it was probably one of the bands. No, that took no, it, it wasn't. It was it was a <laughs> it was in the like a fan stolen. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, How did I get backstage? It's because the way the bus where the buses were mm -hmm. parked. It was some, a car park. It was like a yeah, string, a plastic string that Divided Divide, the car park yeah. from the bus mm. parking lot, and someone just nicked it. And what was your best memory of the bus? Oh man, I, bus I, swap. What bus swap? What was that again? Where we'd all do, pick do you, and do go you on different. Do you remember Ollie's band show? Yeah, well, yeah, I remember. Flashpoint. Of course, I remember Ollie's yeah. band. Fucking hell! Mm. So I mean, so many great memories. Just. Great memory. But, great yeah, but I don't, I don't believe Ollie's around anymore. No, he's no, not. No, he's really passed sad. a long time ago. But no, honestly, did you guys worry about us? 
Yes. Kind of. I was I had too many things. I, I Who did you worry most about? Me. Yeah, because you were like the middle child. And I always thought, Jack will oh, come back and find us. Amy I never saw anyway. She yeah. was off with whoever. She, was locked she in never back. came out of the uh, bus. She was Mom. in the back lounge listening to um, Porter's One Head. is the loneliest number that will ever do. No, no. Over and no. over and over again. It was Porter's Head. Yeah, but that song... Over again. It no, was no. driving me nuts. And it was you because you were so friendly with everyone. <laughs> Just like instantly, like you've known them all your life. And then I'd be like, oh, you know them. No, I don't. No, no. I've just met them, mum. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> They're coming with us on tour now. <laughs> I found these orphan <laughs> children. <laughs> it was a, a bag full of poop on the bus. Throne. That was one of my friends. And she had this whole thing where she's like, if I hold it, I'm going to get sick and then throw up and I can't throw up. And we were, I was like, you're not going to throw up from not shitting. You're fine. <laughs> and she had this whole panic attack. So we ended up having to, like a full blown panic attack because she needed to shit. And so we put a, a, a bin bag inside the toilet on the bus. And just so everyone knows is that the number one rule of the road is that you cannot poo on the tour bus. You Unless just... it's a specific toilet, which this yeah, one wasn't. this was not. And so she <laughs> shit in the bag and then we wrapped it up and then somehow it kind of became a sick, fucked up game where the bus driver ended up getting almost slapped around the head with this bag of shit, and he went insane. Our bus he was... Stopped the, <laughs> he stopped the bus <laughs> on the freeway, didn't he? Yeah. Right. No, so, you threw it onto somebody's windscreen. Some... No, that was the, that was not... It was not shit on someone's windscreen. No, they it was the food It out. was the, um, the pasta... No, the salad dressing that had oil in it. <laughs> and didn't they call the police? Yes. Yes, and I said... I, I had nothing to do with it, because I was like, guys, I don't think you should do that. And Nick Cool came out and dealt with it, right? Yeah. 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 So I remember because you saw us running down the freeway. No, they were on the plane. It wasn't. We had no. Two what buses. was the time when the we were on a bus? You were on another. Uh, when Dad was on a bus and he saw us running away from the bus driver because he said he was going to whip us with his belt. Oh. <laughs> it was. We had our own bus. <laughs> so, kids so, bus so, with so you no had fun. adult supervision. So you had fun, didn't we you? We had a great fucking. It was time. the best fucking summer. Our bus was janky and old. It was a fucking eagle from the 70s. No, it wasn't yes, it that was. old. Yes, it was. It wasn't that it old. It had a bit Do of you a... you really think mum would have put us in an old shitty bus? No, no, I wouldn't. Excuse me. I remember this bus. It was really old, but it had a redo, and that's why you took it. Okay. I don't remember it being that. I remember it being almost well, at like... at least it had a redo. And then as time went on, it was the kid's bus and then Amy's bus. Yeah. Because she wanted nothing to do with us, so she yeah. had her own bus, and then we had the crazy kid bus. And as time went on, there was less and less and less supervision until there was just no adult on the bus. And then us. Big Dave. And then we had Big Dave. And then it got too but got too crazy not having adult supervision. I, so mom pulled in Big Dave. I remember one of the very remember one of the very last like fist fights you and I had. Jack, it was so bad you beat the shit out of me. And you pulled a chunk of my hair Here out. Go again. Like it was like a foot and like a baseball sized chunk of my hair. I, I'm not fighting with her. We're just talking about a fight we had. It, it, oh, so it yes, does. It does. You two can fucking Nostrils talk. Nostrils are fucking flaring here. Hey, shit happens. Crazy Town was on that tour that summer. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> let's just move on from them. That summer was so fun, and that bus. That was ninety nine. That bus driver fucking hated us. And that I wonder was, why. That was when we did the documentary. That was yeah. Ozfest ninety nine, and which the do the Ozfest documentary, which is now finally getting, hopefully, getting to see the light of day. Yes. Ozfest ninety nine. It's a prime uh, example of how things have changed, though. 25 years ago, to get the OzFest documentary release would have cost millions of dollars in licensing music and having bands sign off on it and all that, just in that alone. And now, fast forward 25 years, for the most part, everyone's like, yes, please, just release it. Well, there's some historical people... Um... Wayne Static. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black Sabbath's been on the road for 30 years. Yeah. 
Do you picture yourself in that same position later? You never know if you're still going to be valid when you're that old, you know? I mean, there's some great stuff on, on well, him. Something crazy Static. Wayne Static. Wayne Static from the yeah. band Static. He's oh, yeah. since passed. And, you know, there's lots of people who are no longer with us. And, um, that and, are band, on, and that bands movie. are no longer together, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's, it's oh, look, just... Oh, look, 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 look at Pantera. Yeah, were they? They were ninety nine. No, it was uh, no. it was Rob Zombie ninety nine. Yeah, Rob Zombie. He was Rob always Zombie. great when he was. Oh. Rob Zombie's a great, great friend of mine. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's and a good he's one. great at what he does. Yeah. Come on, he's so talented. Yeah, he is absolutely. And it was always fun when his wife was on tour. Always, and she had her cats, cats with her. Yeah, or dogs. Yeah, yeah they had the, their cats. Their yeah. cats. The, yeah, just the. Best. I'm guessing it's been 25 years. I'm not sure the same cats are still around. You never know. The cats, cats live, live a, really a long, long time, time. <laughs> long ass time. Cats, cats live to about. Can I live? Always has to go back to the cats. Always. Hey there, it's Kelly Osborne, and the Osborne's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can throw us some unexpected curveballs, and there are times when we just uncertain about which path to take. I've been there and I know how tough it can be. I've watched my friends go through all sorts of stuff from significant life events such as moving to a new city, getting married, starting a new career, or for me, like now, starting a family. Life can be pretty complicated. Therapy helps you become the best version of yourself. It's personally teaching me healthier ways to approach the challenges and crossroads I'm facing. Therapy makes me feel safe and supported moving forward. BetterHelp is the best. It's all online and super easy to start. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and you're done. Why wouldn't you want to start? Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Osborns today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Osborns. Who is the naughtiest band ever on... Snot. 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 Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So Snot, they they were a local band from Santa Barbara. They mm-hmm. were they kind of came up at the same time as System and Incubus. And it was they were a part of this the new metal LA scene in the late nineties. But they were gonna be the big ones. They were as far as like harder metal went. They yeah. were on trajectory to be Well they're good. Oh yeah. they were so they good. Were great. They were just I'll, great. I'll I'll pl- I'll play you one oh, of their God. one of their songs before before we you know I, I, I go. Mom went to watch his funeral. Yeah. And the better him his dog. Yeah. 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 Just, it was just just she, she, heartbreaking. Mommy came back so sad. Yeah. And but it's not they the singer was named Lynn Strait, and he was the most mischievous, naughty, n- nicest, craziest fucking guy imaginable. He had the biggest shit eating grin on his face at all time, oh, laughed no. at everything. I've done it again. I can yeah. I? Yeah, <laughs> and he, he was special. He was. he was one of those people that are special. They've got so much charisma and talent. But you know, you know what? You, just you know, him, there are people you know? I've met who was my career that I've gone, I don't know, you know, they're too good to be here. Yeah. They're so good at what they do. They're too good to be. Uh, yeah. Randy was like yeah. that. Yeah. So was Special people. You yeah. know, they've got like a tick on them, you know. Yeah. Stand out from the crowd. And then I'm thinking after them, there was a Marilyn band. Manson was pretty bad with the yeah. trashing of the dressing rooms. Yeah, Marilyn Manson was bad. Yeah, he destroyed a lot of dressing rooms. But he, do you know what? I, I told him from the beginning you play, you pay. So if you want to pay to get the dressing rooms redone, that's fine. Go ahead, do it. And he did. He paid for everyone and just carried on doing I it. I must it was admit, his I did participate in destroying some dressing rooms with them. Thank you very much for telling me, Jack. And thank you, Marilyn, for paying us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. When, when he first came on the tour, it was like, you thought, you thought God's on the tour. You know? Yeah. There was that air. Uh, he's, he was, he's, 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 What's he going to be like? Is it that his bad? security was like back at us. As, you fucking pushing me off. Like. He. I remember one day I was I was walking past and his security went. You you can't come down here. And I was like, why not? He goes, this is you know this is Manson's part of the. He, <laughs> he's like, do you see your name on on the dressing room? And I just pointed at because it would always say Ozfest and then yeah. the artist. And I just pointed to the Ozfest, and he just went, "All right, fair enough." <laughs> <laughs> but Marilyn was okay. He was. He was. You know? Marilyn, he was. Marilyn, Marilyn, and to be honest, right, uh, nothing to do with the Ozfest. He's been taking a, a I rem- beating right lately in the press. 
Well, it, just to what mom said, you play, you pay. I mean, it's like, listen, mm-hmm. it's it's a different time. There was a lot of crazy shit that clearly happened or allegedly happened. And a lot that didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot that didn't. So it's, you know. I think for that, I just, I think my stance is, listen, just I reserve, you know, my rights for comment until after everything's come to the surface. But my yeah. experience with Manson yeah. it's, was it's always. It's weird that you know, you know, it all went and they all got. He back. would. Ne- Do you listen- remember when he gave us the poopy powder to put in someone's drink and we put it in that girl's drink and she shat herself? I don't remember you that. You don't remember that? We've I- gone back to shitting. Well, why is it always got to go back to shit, Kelly? Because, she's, because these she's are the stories. Boy. This is like what. What you, actually happened? I, I'm gonna cut together. It's not just me. It, it actually, Kelly. <laughs> it really is. I'm gonna cut together a montage of how many stories of shit you've said. <laughs> that would be funny. Well, she likes to leave my baby alone. She likes to poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel lighter and cleaner. Inside. <laughs> but, but yeah, I just think you know the stuff with Manson is. It's, it's all right. A one. It's a. It's a. Listen, it, I go by what I I know and what I know, and the way he was to us was very respectful. He was always acted very appropriately. Whatever, whatever, and all I know is that I mean, every I, night I, I there find were hard to women waiting to get on his tour bus, begging to get on the tour bus, and my whole thing is, what, what did you think he was going to do? Show you his stamp collection? It's a good point. You know what? What was he going to do? My, teach you, know, you to knit? In my, I have a good stamp collection. How do you know? <laughs> no, but oh, oh, what were they going to do? Crochet on the bus? Play a game it, of chess. You yeah. never know. It could do. No, I don't mm. think so. Close game of cock, But it is. But, cock uh, but as I as I said with the the stuff with with Danny Masterson, I I knew him in a social setting. That's it. In a you know we spent a lot of time out and about. What goes on behind someone's door? You never know. You never know. You just you can't say. And I think you know just got to see what comes out in the wash with it. But it's uh, it is blind it is, melon camp, huh? With Blind Melon? Blind no, Melon. Blind, Blind Melon never Melon. played. No, they never no, played. He, they passed away. He passed away before. He passed away, yeah. yeah. Before Wasn't the he tour. tour? No. No, no, he passed away. I remember also Papa Roach causing a lot of trouble and getting them to rip up the grass that we'd have to have yeah. relayed every single, after every show. Yeah. And you'd go insane. Wait, hang on a second. If we're going to talk about causing trouble, this one caused the most trouble. When? Why? When? Which one? Refusing to get off the plane to play the gig and a full-blown fucking riot kicked off. An entire venue destroyed. It was like the Toyota Center. I well, forgot why where. You, why was I throwing that one, boo? You, I know exactly I, why. Let me I tell don't you exactly know. why. Oh, come on. Tell us. She tossed out your Vicodin stash and you went fucking nuts. Oh, she, the cat's mother. Yes. Meow. Oh. <laughs> 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 puss, puss. <laughs> When the, um, one of the band members announced that Ozzy wasn't here, the guys ran to the fence and started tearing it down. They knocked down an 18-foot wooden wall. The police will have the right gear on, ready to go in. Found found your stash, tossed it. I remember I was sat on we were sat on the runway with Mike Borden. It was uh, Trujillo. Trujillo, yeah. I think who was playing for Dad? I think it was was Zach or was it? No, I don't think it was Zach. Was it? Joe Holmes? Yeah, I think it was yeah, Joe Holmes. it was Joe. And d- he was refusing to get off the plane, and we were sat there for hours, and the phone, hey, they're getting really pissed I off I was here. with mom, and you were with dad, no, we weren't were you? all on the plane. Were we? all on the we plane. We were all on, because I, I have a memory of him screaming and punching the side of the plane. <gasps> oh, my God, yes! Plane. And th- as the time would tick on, hey, they're getting real crazy here. Is he coming or not? And then it would be like, okay, they're starting to rip up the chairs. And as it just got worse with every phone call. And it got so bad, they, it was like the, I forget the name of what the venue was, but it was like the Toyota Center and they had I cars. I blocked it out of my mind. They had cars everywhere, like on display. Cause, and they flipped the cars, they burnt the cars. It, the place was destroyed. Like riot police had to come in. You just didn't want to go to work that day. One of those things. You can't do it every day. No. Listen, you got you know, when greatness greatness can't just appear. It has In to Dad's be defense, cultivated. I'd be pissed off too. I'm what? not pissed off. Just... I know, I would be pissed off. I don't think I I'd be like, I'm not doing it then. How many riots 
have you been at the center of? I won't say responsible for, but at the center of. The Randy one was pretty bad. And the what? one in San Diego was pretty bad as yeah. well. Yeah. What, what Randy one? Did a show. Um, we, 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 no, I tell lots of that. We were we booked to do Long Beach Arena, but I had a bad throat. The per- we said if you've you got a ticket stub, you could we'll, we'll allow us to go to the. Wait, so, so if they had a ticket stub, they could go to Irvine? Yeah. From from Saturday to Wednesday. Well, these people from, from Saturday were still getting lonely. Oh, the audience was fucked up, stoned. So they, they, put, they put all the people from, most of the people from Long Beach at the back of the Irvine thing. So there was all on the hill. So they're all shouting around, and somebody said, they're all at the back. So I go, okay. I was, come on down. So they fucking, <laughs> words I wish I'd never fucking said. Because they fucking come down like a fucking avalanche. I didn't stop at the, at the, I mean, Randy Rhodes' mum was there. We were doing the gig for Randy Rhodes. So we're going to buy him It up. was the tribute show, right? Yeah. yeah. For his, so we're going to pay for a better tombstone for him, was the way. So like they, they, they didn't stop at the stage. They all come on the stage, ripping the gear to, he's like fucking. They, they all came on the stage and took all the equipment. Yeah. And so I, I, I'll come off the stage and, 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 and you can hear through the PA. Fuck off. Mum was like, go up there, Ozzy. And, and she come out of the pit. Go up there, Ozzy, and tell them, to, if you don't, they don't stop, we're not going to play. I said, you know, it's a fucking man. He's coming out of the PA. All this <laughs> you guys are having an argument <laughs> on the PA. Yeah. <laughs> this is my God and fuck you can try it, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Rhodes is going, this is what always happens. Oh, Mrs. Rhodes. She was a dear old Oh, friend. God. The best. I remember there well, was we, like tornado warnings at Ozfest. Yeah, we had to. Yeah, yeah, we'd evacuate. And, Always and when we were in um, the Midwest out or um, South you, Beach. Yeah, I'll tell you what was cool when, you, when we and I took the helicopter from here to where where where, where is it? Where was it? Saint, San San Bernardino. Bernardino. So and you're flying in, and it's like a, 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 a great to fly over the crowd. Yeah, it's like amazing when you see it from the air. Do you guys still have the record at, at San Bernardino? Yeah. It was like, what, 65,000? Well, it was more. more. Yeah. And I think they were telling porkies about how many people were in there. Why? Just for like fire reasons? Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, when you go, if you go there by ro- road, the fucking traffic starts. It's oh, terrible. It's and you'd always have to commit to are you doing a it's runner not... or are you staying for another two hours? Yeah. No. I don't remember that one when we stayed with the Sabbath tour, what I did. And Je- Jesse, Jesse was uh, being a naughty, but Jesse Wild. Well. Who's just about to get married in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, just because uh, Can you believe it now? Fucking old time goes by. Baby Jesse is a Baby Jesse man. is a big record executive now. Oh, really? Is he? Yeah, he's doing great. Uh, where's he work? I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, um, What is the largest crowd you've ever performed in front of? Oh, so so the US Festival, US Festival, or the the first Rock in Rio, Rock in Rio US Festival. There's half a million in one. They said, and uh, the there's a lot close to that US Festival. In the Rock in Rio site, um, it was going on for three days, and what was happening? What was happening was people were getting their place and not moving, so they were. Going to the bathroom where they were, and oh, afterwards st- the place was so contaminated it had to be. I go on stage. I go on stage. Like I'm, I'll tell you what. I know we did two shows, the Saturday and the Wednesday. And by the time I did, I went straight to the stage on both nights. The second show I got, and the smell was. The crew were all wearing um, bandanas the, the around their face. The smell was fucking unbelievable. Was, when they used to go in the crowd to do the lights and sound, mm-hmm. they were like all sick. Oh my the gosh. smell was unfucking believable. Oh, hard to catch a show. I've, I've, always, was... I've always wondered where, when you see audiences that big, where they go to the bathroom. Well, there's never enough bathrooms. Never but the enough. thing was, they, they day kind of have after it down day, now. Yeah. Now, but I mean, not the in Us those festival, days. It was like forward fucking. Where was the Us Festival held at? 
Oh, 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 I remember uh, Van oh, Halen. Oh, here, oh, here in LA. Oh, it was in, in LA. Van Halen yeah. got oh, a million the, dollars. Uh -huh. it, it, was, it was at the um, it was the uh, the Motor Speedway, wasn't Speedway. it? Speedway. Speedway. There were it, there were so many people there that they found two or three people dead the day after the festival had finished, wow. amongst all the rubbish. Wow. Yeah, can you believe? And how some sad? girl how sad. got kidnapped. And fucking years later, like eight years later, they they found her in this trailer park, being held against the wall, and that was big. Wow! Oh, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. So many people. I, it was just unbelievable. To that sub, to that point, Ozfest had an impeccable safety record. It did as yep, fucking did. crazy as it was, and as mental as the crowds were. I, I mean, I can't think of, I think maybe there was one or two fatalities and there it was, was always drug or alcohol induced. It was, one of them was coming out of San Bernardino and the weather turned, the, the wind whipped up mm -hmm. and nobody could see. And all the police were like, you know, trying to see to direct the traffic. And one policeman got I remember that run yeah. over, unfortunately. But uh, we never had any any fatalities at our show yeah. never it, everything was like a hundred percent proof we had people die during the tour though on the tour yeah don't you remember that one band the singer died from uh vicodin overdose on his he was found in his in his bunk, bunk. oh yeah. drowning pool was with that on ours first yeah it was on ours first i think it was i can't I remember think it was yeah i think it was yeah 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 that was sad but um, as far as safety goes for the crowds, it was it was fine. When you see things like uh, like the Firefest documentary, or you know, oh what my recently God, don't happened with even. like Travis Scott and the What's overcrowding. The What's the Fire Festival? Fire Festival, this like two bit hustler from New York City, it, it basically threw together like a fake festival and sold tickets for it and had people show up. But, but he there didn't, was no. But there was no festival, and people were just left on this island in the Caribbean with oh, no yeah, food, yeah. no water, no bands, nothing. No money. It was just a. It was a complete ruse. Um, what happened to him? He's. I think he's going to prison. Although there is an announcement. He did come out with an Saying announcement. Saying that they're doing a new fire festival. <laughs> yeah. He's, oh yeah, he's, please. Yeah. 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 Talking of which, this year, uh, the burning Burning Man was a big disaster. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a little been, muddy. No, but it's been such a huge success year after year after year. Mm -hmm. It was just the weather this, was against you. This. Gotta have one mulligan. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really kill there. No. No, no, so, no. no, 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 someone died this year. Really? I, Out I, of I swear here. to you. I, if you look but it up. But it's like the most peaceful love no, and they're peace. All fucking they're all stoned. so out of their mind on drugs and it's so hot, people will pass out in the heat and they'll die of exposure. Oh, my God. That's horrible. Yeah, there, there's always deaths at Burning I, that's Man. That's the thing. It's. But it's Dusty, like an older people's kind of festival. It is an older yeah, people's festival. Older people were younger people one time. And they are. But they forget that they're older people. And they'll, <laughs> one guy was so off his mind, he threw himself into the burn. They burn a big effigy and he ran into the fire and burned himself to death. Oh, oh well, he horrible. must have been on Oh, yeah, he was definitely bouncing uh, off the rings yeah. of satin. When you see stuff like... You know the tragedies at festivals, like what happened to uh, what a Jew, is it Jews called Astro World? Astro World and what it, like oh, what they, so? oh seven oh seven God. people. Mm -hmm. there, it was overcrowding, not enough security, terrible planning, and what was that one with people the got trampled rapper, to death. The This is what we're That's talking about. One. This is the one. They got trampled he, to death. He got the, he got arrested, didn't he? Uh, no, I don't know. Did he? No, no, he didn't. But he was told at the beginning of the show from the fire marshal and everybody like, please be careful and don't incite anything. And he Kelly had his Kelly warning. Kelly Kelly, what were you but I said, it, that was it. There was a child who uh, yeah, a died, boy. a little boy. Oh. Just, I think he was 12. But when you see stuff like that, do you get, I get, and obviously I wasn't, nearly it i mean you organized it do you get pissed off when you see stuff like that because it's so avoidable yeah i do get pissed off i do get pissed off and unfortunately you need to have somebody with the balls to walk up on stage and go stop because people on that stage some of them could see what was happening and so you pull the plug you pull the sound you go up and you say 
like yeah. part everybody everybody it's part like, take and a it, stop take a step nobody back nobody likes to do it everybody looks at everybody else and they're all like oh well, well, what do we do what do we do and even though you've got your production managers your manager your agents all of these people and it's like get on that stage and just I remember stop it. doing a gig it's the it most was, simple it was, thing it wasn't an art festival it was this guy when when you're on stage you can sort of spot the one in the crowd. And this guy was sitting, standing there with his arms crossed, looking, not rocking, just sitting there. He suddenly goes, whack to this fucking guy beside him, smacked him in the face, and folded his arms in, and I'm going, what the fuck's he all about? But you can, it's like a, the one in the crowd. So you he, can, so you can spot, it's you, clear as day. I, yeah, it depends like, oh, on your life. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, as I've oh, said, oh, I'm rocking around it's, getting, it, well, anyway, let me finish. So he cracks his girl, and I go, I'm going to what the circle go. Get this fucking thing out of here. So they, they, uh, get him. So Brian Henry was the other my money to go. Goes down, gets him, and he's gone. I thought, I thought, I thought he'd throw him, throw him out. So when I finished the set, I go off stage, and the cops have got this kid, and he's got his hands handcuffed behind. And this guy is fucking, I swear I'm not joking, lying. Degloving his hand to the, through the fucking handcuffs. handcuffs. He's pulling the handcuffs over his skin and his skin's going, and the cops are going, slow down, buddy, what the fuck are you doing? But he was on that TCP. No, whatever. GHB. PCP? PCP. PCP. Yeah. Whatever that fucking is. And he was literally pulling the skin off of Oh. But it's going back to when you see something happening in the audience. It depends on your um, what's going on in your lights in yeah. front of you because sometimes artists are blinded if there's special effects I, going I, on, whatever. I can never have spotlights on my, directly in my face because I, I can't see what's coming. I mean, it's, you, oh, well, over the years, you can imagine what kind of things I had to duck, duck you, and dive and fucking... Avoid, but when yeah. you but when you're doing huge, huge stadiums or or huge festival sites, and you're the headliner, you should always have your own, not just for the band, not just band security. You need a venue security head for you to represent you. So your head of security is there dealing with the venue security, mm, not and just that, letting the venue security do their thing. Never, never, because. There's always mistakes on both sides. So if you've got two, you know, you avoid, hopefully yeah. you avoid that. So you've always got your head of security always out there the whole time on radios to all the other security directors. And it just has to be like a regimented. What? It, you can't just let these things go and, oh, oh, the promoter's great, he's done this for so long and yada, yada, yada. You know, sometimes the promoters will let in more people than they should and it, it gets past the fire marshal, so there's too many people to control in a site. That's mm. happened loads of times. And, you know, sometimes the artist will incite it. And mm. if you know that you're head of security for an artist that is known for inciting kids to come up on stage or to come closer to the stage, it's, you know, it's got to be stopped because yeah. people will die. You know, knowing what you know of that and your expertise in organizing festivals and dealing with crowds of similar size to the, the kind of what happened at Astro World, what, how do you think that could have been avoided? I don't know because I wasn't there, but I, I mean, I the read barrier, that at, the... at one point there was an ambulance driving through the crowd and the, sh the band was still playing. Mm. It's like, the, the, what, the, the what barrier, insanity is this? The barrier was very out. weak as well. Mm. But, I, mean, I mean, what happened to Donington that one, one year? Was they all got crushed? You remember they all got fucking Oh, didn't they? Sure. And didn't that's the when they had the... Um, boulders going through the crowd and now they part the crowd so the crowd can't just be one mass yeah they part you in the middle oh they yeah they have like a bit now now they it's even like do a it more shape thing yeah yeah so it's that's you know you I mean, learn unfortunately before, by horrible they're, they're, they're about halfway down the fucking field before you see the front first row yeah yeah it's really weird it's really I've, I've far away from gig. the stage and when you're on stage, it's, it's like you're playing to nobody. You can't see the fucking audience. Oh, because they're so far back. Yeah, they're so far back. Yeah. 
Did you ever see any of the docu? The it was the the Woodstock '99 documentary. Yes, I did. I saw. I it saw all. a bit of it. It was disgraceful. Did you did you see it, Kelly? No. It was done by my favorite promoter, John Shear. I heard about what they said though. It my favorite fucking... promoter. He was the first promoter that I ever had a fight with. Yeah. The first one ever. So the promoter ever. of the actual festival, not the documentary. The festival. Yeah. He he and I never got on anyway, but he was the guy that did the Woodstock again. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that never had enough toilets, wouldn't let people take in water. There was no shade. It was badly organized from A to B to C. And that's when the kids, you can't do that to them because they will rebel. But, and but they did didn't, rebel. Didn't, didn't, didn't people die there? Yeah, a bunch of people. There, yeah. was a, there was murders, rapes, everything. <gasps> but you want to know what pissed me off about the documentary? And I it, it did my fucking head in. I was watching the documentary and... They used the they they compared uh, Woodstock '69 to Woodstock '99. They were talking about in '69 it was all peace, love, flowers in your hair. You know some of these amazing performances, this, that, and the other. Legendary, legendary. Um, and then they started picking apart the bands that were on Woodstock '99, and it was a it was a lot of new metal, rap metal, but you know bands that have, had toured with us mm -hmm. and they they in this doc in one version of the documentary they surmised that the reason why it all went shit shit storm as outside of the um you know lack of infrastructure and water and you know and toilets toilets and everything they said that it was because uh of racism and heavy metal inciting racism and which is like the most insane thing ever. It sounds like I mean, something that the really promoter would have That's, come that's up what with. they said. Yeah. They basically said, in in so many words, they had these young, kind of you know twenty something year old journalists who write for you know music magazines now, who probably were still sucking their thumb when it all went down, had no memory of it, reflecting and being like, well, you know, racism was a huge part in why it all. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. You'll never meet a more accepting group of people than fucking heavy metal fans. And that was so great about Ozfest. Yeah. And it was like summer camp for everyone where you got to be around people that were like it's you it's and it's you it's weren't the weird kid in school anymore. Yeah. It's, it's what are you saying? If you if you if, if people get frustrated if they if they don't have the right colour toilets and Yeah. It's yeah, so the true. kids aren't stupid, they won't Sorry, stand for okay. it. And it's it's just not fair. It yeah. is not fair because they were taking every dollar that those kids had and it's like the they weren't they they, they didn't get what were they cutting for. costs there was just badly run no infrastructure not enough security not enough shade for i mean it just goes on and on and on oh great blame the bands yeah blame the bands yeah, yeah. they were the ones yeah because uh, <laughs> fill in the blank racism <laughs> like who do we blame racism i mean that is just insanity yeah just insanity well i'd like to just thank all of our old Fest fans for all the years yes. yeah. that you they family, supported us fans. yeah it is one big family yeah and if you weren't there you don't know what we're talking about but but it if you was were there, amazing. And if you were there, you were You're part, part of, of the club. Yeah, and a part of history, really. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Musical history. And it was great years. We've had some fun over the years, haven't we? We have an art, my darling. On that note, let's close it out. Bye, everyone. Bye. It's lovely to see you, speak to you, and see you. Loved you. Everything everyone's doing is basically ripping off Black Sabbath anyway. We're Ozzy, we fucking love Ozzy! I we'll keep saying, when's the end coming, when's the end coming? But they're still out there and I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, what the fuck is he doing?